obviously the process to elimination meant a lot of exploration of um, user journeys and um, yeah, a lot of this stuff, which was amazing. I'm so nostalgic about this. Um, and at some point we started to joke about why shouldn't a hospital talk directly to you? Uh, why shouldn't there be type on the walls that says things? And, uh, and so along with the signage of different areas, we actually have a tagline. So like, for example, clinic says cheer up your year now. Um, and so on and so forth. So like we really thought about how different areas need to say certain things because of the mindset of the people who are entering those spaces or what uh, they might need to hear at that time. Um, the signage was created in wood, um, etched, um, full system of pictograms, all of that. This is what the space looks like, the rooms look like. Um, they delivered on their promise of a library in every waiting room. And um, it's being called a hospital that feels like home very often and that feels really, really good. Um, you guys just recently saw Terai um, that's just been launched. So this is only a bit of a preview of the process that we've been working on. This is a new gin that we're launching soon and we've been working with uh, at Quick Brown Fox Design. Um, again, more stuff will come up on our Instagram. And this is another place where that sense of craftsmanship, thankfully, uh, very grateful again to have clients that champion the same things that we do. Um, and we've been able to look at the shape of the bottle, the stopper, the, the design of the distillery, um, illustrations, every detail. In fact, the distillery has almost everything is handcrafted, in fact, by different people, uh, different friends. Um, and all of that is going to be coming up soon. On the QBF Instagram. Plug done. Um, this is again a sneak preview of something that we just finished literally two days before lockdown for the Indian Space Research Organization. So it gives me goosebumps to say that uh, for the Delhi headquarters. Um, and a little bit of imposter syndrome also because it's giant installations. And what do graphic designers know? But uh, but when people ask, we try. Um, and so this is on their facade. Um, this is in the atrium. It's three and a half floors tall. Um, and this is a sundial that we've created that actually works. It's very accurate, tells the time perfectly. Um, and again, we'll be sharing more of this stuff as we move forward. So um, around the same time, uh, okay, not bad. Um, around the same time uh, that all of this stuff was happening, like I said, I had a secret life um, and all of us at NID were inspired by Prash. Um, I was and Alan. And um, for me, drawing diaries, I've always drawn diaries, but at some point I started traveling. Um, I started backpacking alone um, to Europe, particularly in different and, and then different places. Um, but I started to backpack with uh, literally backpack where I would not make any bookings and go this was time without a phone etc um, and I would only carry my diary with me and I would literally book places to stay at or trains to different cities etc on the fly and I would do it for averagely four or five weeks at a time um, and this was a way for me to I would I would literally only buy the ticket to a place and back from another place and nothing else in between um, and this became a way for uh, for me to um, I think think about think about it, it's very profound to say this but think about the human condition um, really think about what human what it means to be human um, and not only confront my own fears head on about different things or explore the shape of who I am uh, and connect back with my own wisdom uh, that I discovered at some point um, but you know and really throw myself in the deep end because traveling alone is like that um, but also um, explore how I how I am, you know, when I can wake up every morning and be whoever I want to be. Um, who is it that I talk to? Where is it that I go? What are the kind of relationships that I've forged? What are the kind of conversations that I have? Um, and each one of these diaries is um, is filled with so many of those moments and so much magic. Um, when I look back, I think just about the word magic. I think about how much magic I discovered in humanity and in, in the world um, and how there were so many moments where I would just look up at the sky and really be like, how is this happening? Um, really so much, maybe almost every day. 
um and so and and having a diary with me meant that i was i would not i would write everything um like a continuous stream after a particular point um i think by the fifth or sixth day i would be in full flow um and i would have no filter between me and the diary or whatever i was um articulating at that time i would only start to think about it or realize what has happened maybe a month after i would come back home um and that ended up being a very meditative process while it was happening i never thought about the product itself these diaries themselves um but gradually after the first three or four i think i started to realize that you know when i started to post some of these on facebook at that time um and i was very self conscious in the beginning to share some of this because it was really stream of conscious you know stuff um but i started to realize that people were again it's the same thing that i spoke about earlier that people are connected so much with so many of these stories or ideas or thoughts um that um i wanted to see if i could bring some of that into my work in some way you know what what would that inform uh, me to do in some way um so again like i was so intimidated by graphic design and uh, the nerdy you know great amazing huge stuff that it does um but it's these small moments that i started to feel real things in and wonder whether that was not um you know part of everything um and all of these are like i said conversations like this was uh, while sitting at a particular bar and very often i would get plates of free food uh, i think this one i've also written for the artist somewhere because they just put a plate of great food in front of me and said for the artist um and it started off this conversation with these people in this tiny bar in florence um that's it's uncountable the number of times that that has happened and usually i find it very uh, i'm quite self conscious in conversations um, especially around new people but um, the diaries really have always become this channel of uh, striking the most meaningful conversations actually suddenly you know on a train um, i met estefania on a train from granada to barcelona Mm, this was a house that i was couch surfing in so before airbnb there was couch surfing um and couch surfing was even greater magic because there's no money involved and it felt like it was just the most amazing thing um and a, a whole lot of curiosity about languages so i pick up words and languages fairly easily um i think because i'm i'm okay with playing around with them and that uh, is something that i explore a lot i love to draw in museums i love it when museums don't allow photography actually because then i'm forced to not you know be lazy about taking a quick snapshot but actually sit down on the ground in front of some of these paintings and try and absorb them um and i'm almost indignant in my head when i look at crowds of tourists in museums uh full snob behavior um but you know the fact that they were they were always meant to be places of study um and i feel very Mm, yeah very right she's doing that but i do feel like this great connection with every artist that i'm drawing from that i'm studying from um similarly with churches and cathedrals um this i i just you know go and sit down there and the trip to italy was so meaningful just yeah we can talk forever about them so i will resist um and yeah lots of nerdy studying about the renaissance lots of like i said stream of consciousness so um this was a rainy cold day in london um and i think somewhere on this page okay somewhere on this page i was sitting i went to dishoom to eat rajma chawal and chai because literally that day needed some comfort and uh, i had ordered a plate of samosas and this uh, I, the only place i got was at the bar and so this this guy came down came and sat down next to me and uh, when the plate of samosas was put in front of us he thought there was for the table so he happily ate from it um and i couldn't say anything to him so i wrote a gora mere sath baitha mera samosa kha gaya um and this was a this was a week when i was severely sick in granada where nobody spoke english i didn't have a functioning phone i was delirious from the fever um and um my god i just wrote non stop in this diary and you, when you read it it's so it's so crazy it makes me smile so much um because i was i was writing how exhausted and and desperate i was and how badly i needed a hug and then i'd be like no no this will be fine it'll all be good <laughs> um 
This is just a whole lot of lettering on the fly. Um, this was a, the best graffiti I've ever seen uh, in South Bank Center on the back of a bathroom door. Um, and so that my diaries have always done that for me. Um, they've been therapy. Um, even pages that till very recently I was very, very strictly to share with anybody, uh, mostly because I know the state of mind that I drew them in. But this one on the right quite seriously rescued me. The fact that I could uh, pick up a pen and draw something in that particular moment was a very huge deal. Um, and therefore, I've also always drawn sketch notes um, at conferences, during speeches, even during TED Talks that I'm watching online. Um, it is my way of absorbing a whole lot of data and making sense of it and remembering it. Um, and again, it's, um, it's by chance that they became uh, something that other people could connect to as well, which turned out really well for me again at conferences because I could speak with the actual speakers um, like Seb Lester um, and other people like that who I've met uh, because of the diaries. A whole lot of jokes in there, um, a whole lot of thoughts that I look back at uh, to reflect that. Um, during music performances, um, it's a way for me to pay more attention, I think. Um, it's not, it's far away from a distraction. This was during a Kusro performance. Um, similarly, to letter poetry or to remember things um, in this manner is, these are a couple of, yeah, I have a million favorite poems, so I would really say that too often. Um, even, you know, presence for people. And I've tried to do different things with words. I'm very curious about words and the shapes of words in different ways and how, how to give them some form. Um, and that's pretty much what drives me to try a few of these things. Sometimes I'm thinking about the, the stuff that I know about letters and their shapes. Sometimes I'm not thinking at all, um, but I'm sure that all of it comes together in some way. Uh, every now and then I've drawn some murals. This was at Oxford Bookstore in Delhi. Again, I love uh, the history of Delhian poetry. So bringing that together is fantastic. This is something that Ayush invited me uh, to do at Narendra Bhavan in um, it's love uh, who gets to paint on a red piano uh, that belonged to the Maharaja of Bikaner. Um, this was learning calligraphy in Japan, uh, which I've spoken about to you guys. Um, this is again lettering at social in Devnagri, etc. Um, and I also at some point started to teach and started to particularly teach. I started with teaching illustration and basic graphic design courses many, many, many years ago. Um, again, grateful to Nina Sabnani actually because she invited me to teach alongside her uh, while I was still doing my dip project, which is quite crazy. Um, but that's another thing that I love about NIB, the fact that it encourages people to share with each other. And so many of us started teaching there itself. Um, and so at some point I started to bring, um, I started to be as brave with teaching as with, you know, the lettering stuff that I was just talking about in terms of bringing playfulness and freedom and inventing my own weird techniques to do stuff. Um, and this water lettering particularly is something that um, has been, I've just enjoyed this so much, uh, which is that after students have learned a little bit of uh, calligraphy, um, I invite them to take it out to the streets. We just dip these giant mops in water and you have to use your entire body to letter and so you can't be that intimidated by it anymore. Uh, but at the same time, you have to pay attention to the form that you've just learned. So it becomes this really crazy, uh, fun, interesting thing. Um, and usually people take five minutes to get warmed up and into it and then they never want to go back. And I have this huge collection of photographs of weird shit that people have lettered on the streets just because it's going to evaporate afterwards. Um, and it's fantastic. It's the most insane stuff. Um, and so type is a way to, uh, for me to, to think about bringing people together of connection. Uh, of course, it's also nerdy and very intimidating. And I keep thinking about ways to make that simpler for people um, to literally what I call make friends with type. Um, and this is a picture from Type Camp. So Shelly Grunler in uh, the US um, is this professor and researcher of typography. She started uh, this thing called Type Camp and she and I teamed up together to create a two day format for India. Uh, we called it Type Camp Bahar. 
Bharat, and I think we ran it for three years consecutively in three different cities: Bombay, Bangalore, uh, Delhi. Um, and it's this very high energy um, two days of uh, I think six or seven different modules uh, that we teach uh, with different things to do with type. And the entire idea is to um, literally make friends with type. Uh, to sort of introduce certain basics and technicalities, but also make it supremely fun so that you don't, you're not scared of it anymore. And a lot of graphic design students, in fact, even people who are not designers um, have this hesitation to work with type, but actually type and the alphabet is just this really fun thing. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, it has some rules, but it's also, you know, it's allowed to play with it. Um, so yeah, again, like that's a whole separate world that I can talk forever about. But um, there's, um, yeah, some of these images are also from type courses at NID, maybe even some at Shrishti where Kavi invited me to talk, which is amazing also. And um, this is bits of the water lettering on the street um, and a type camp. This was in Denmark uh, while I was teaching at uh, this animation school and these guys wrote ass and then they made it assassin and this was the wall of a theater. They did not like that idea at all. Um, people at NID leave post-it notes for each other in water lettering and of course one can extend that easily to sand and other surfaces or even light. We keep trying to make different devices to make calligraphy with. Um, draw on many different surfaces, thanks to Posca markers. Um, I've been able to get students to draw uh, graffiti in institutes, in different places, on glass walls. Um, and of course, do a lot of type walks and um, take things out from. This is this fantastic, my favorite. Uh, exercise, but again, we need a whole different space to talk about it. And this is one of the things that I love also, again, is the idea that we give back with type. And so I think these photos are in fact from the Shrishti course, uh, where the last assignment would be to actually go out into the neighborhood and speak with some of the uh, vendors, the shopkeepers that cannot afford their own signage and create a signboard for them. Um, and it's a um, it's a decent way of students to connect back with the neighborhoods or the communities that they're a part of. It's a decent thing to do. It's a really good thing to do. Um, and this is an idea that we also then did in uh, Type Camp Japan. Uh, this was this village called Makabi that we that we stayed in for 10 days that hosted us. And so we created these, these are all Japanese letters. And so we created using this, um, this craft, this local artist style, uh, we created the signboards for the village to display. Um, and so taking off from that is this idea of the type of engines. I started to play with type in public spaces um, and the love for Delhi meant literally going into parks and on fences and walls, etc. and just trying to explore what I could do with creating type. Um, and as a contrast to traditional graffiti, try and figure out ways to do it without vandalizing anything. And we, we one of my friends named it type of engines. Again, very grateful to Kasha uh, for coming up with this word because it's become a thing um, because they were just type in interventions to her mind um, and they were because we said we are going to spell happy words uh, or fun things that people can think about um, and you know unlike graffiti again like be provocative but in an exciting and in, in an interesting or an inspiring way um, and not uh, create any waste or vandalism of anything um, and so this was created on a day that was extremely hot and a of course, when it's really, and the petrol prices had just gone up. And of course, when it's really hot, you have great watermelons. So tank up on your juice instead. Um, this was a piece called Petrica, which was praying for the monsoons to come soon and how hot the streets were. Um, and so when you spray water onto them, I'm going to not try to make this gif run, but essentially we just kept taking the stencil to different corners of the street and, and spraying water through it. And when it would evaporate, you would get that rain smell. Um, and this was a piece called Jose Khas, uh, which we actually floated in the in the in the in the reservoir uh, called Jose Khas, and was to talk about uh, the history of that reservoir that everybody knows of but doesn't know the history of. This was we were invited at an inclusive school in Delhi to create a piece on the edge of their annual day stage, um, and so it's it's. Actually 
actually just cut up in this image. It actually learns is this whole length. And uh, Pooja, who's this amazing, amazing typographer, she and I had always had this curiosity to combine Devnagri and Braille in one piece. And so we tried to do that here. Uh, the Devnagri is spelled out in bindis and the Braille is in buttons. So children who can who, who can see and who can't see can read it at the same time. And so it was this idea of inclusivity um, and that the world should be accessible to everyone. Um, and Typerventions then became this fantastic learning tool because it's this, it's this format that I've developed over the last, um, I think five years or five, seven years or something, maybe more um, of, um, you know, it's this quick sort of create format where people can create type in this lo-fi sort of a way and sort of start to wrap their head around the logic or the system of type. Um, and so I design uh, these modular letters for every workshop, uh, pick up materials that are low cost, local, uh, as non-vandalistic or wasteful as possible, um, and get people to create these words. Uh, and then they come together to form uh, either a phrase or a single large word. These are some pictures from London. Um, and this is how it comes together. These, this is in popcorn on a fence so that, you, so that the birds could actually come and eat it. Um, this is leaves just tucked into a fence. Uh, there's no stitching, no sticking, so they could be just pulled out. So I'm gonna read this. This is do one thing every day that scares you. Creativity is your intelligence having fun and change what you can not accept this also works the other way around accept what you cannot change and this is last i think no a few years ago in london the greatest thing you'll ever learn is to love and be loved in return Amazing, lovely. Um, so that is that. <laughs> Put a spotlight yeah. onto your other screen. 
She's going to do a demo for us, guys. Yeah. The uh, it is send a recording of the poem. You let me know when I want to play. So that strategy. Okay, play. Okay, here goes. So this, this is um, this is one of my favorite uh, Mary Oliver poems, and I felt that it's. it's always relevant that's what's amazing about it but it's particularly relevant right now um and so i thought that it would be nice to read the entire poem to you while i let her just a portion of it and chat has read that it has sent that recording right you're it saying it's a recording uh, because he had to rush amazing. for buying ice cream for the kids so he sent a recording <laughs> so i want to play the recording i hope you guys can hear it while she's doing that Experience so I'm just going to do a couple of uh, versions of this, um, just on the fly. Um, there are so many ways uh, and so many materials to letter, but um, but I just do some quick stuff. Yeah. You have time to linger for just a little while, out out of your busy and very important day. Goldfinches, the goldfinches that have gathered in a field of thistles. for a musical battle to see who can sing the highest note or the lowest or the most expressive of mirth or the most tender their strong blunt beaks drink the air as they strive melodiously not for your sake not for mine and not for the sake of winning but for sheer delight and gratitude believe us they say it is a serious thing just to be alive on this fresh morning in the broken world I beg you do not walk by without pause uh-huh. at the end of this rather ridiculous performance it could mean something it could mean everything mm-hmm. but real came in when he wrote you must change your life mm-hmm. let's get the voice for just a little while out out of your busy and very important day for the goldfinches that have gathered in a field of thistles for a musical battle to see who can sing the highest note or the lowest or the most expressive of mirth or the most tender their strong blunt beaks drink the air as they strive melodiously not for your sake not for mine and not for the sake of winning but for sheer delight and gratitude believe us they say it is a serious thing just to be alive on this fresh morning in the broken world i beg of you do not walk by without pausing to attend to this rather ridiculous performance it could mean something it could mean everything it could be what real came in when he wrote you must change your life so good <clears throat> Superb. So beautiful. The stunning stuff, Kriti. 